Hello everyone, uh, my name is Veera Bhaskar Muthiala. I am a technical marketing engineer for Catalyst Switching at Cisco. Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy Coho, also technical marketing at Cisco Systems, covering the Catalyst Switching and iOS XE programmability feature set. So the agenda of this video is to showcase um, the smart building solution where we have the 90 watt POE endpoints, how we're going to monitor their power consumption at the switchboard level, how we can use this PoE telemetry from the Catalyst iOS XE and how we can visualize that and how we can monitor and how we can do a simple automation use case where we can uh, turn off and turn on these endpoints at a certain time of the day and how we can visualize the power usage levels um, on, on these endpoints. So uh, what we have here is a smart building um, that has a couple of switches that are PoE endpoints connected to them. We have a bunch of uh, smart desks and um, uh, PoE powered shades, PoE powered cameras and PoE powered PCs as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna collect the telemetry on each switch board and each switch at the system level to see what is the power consumption level like at each switch board at a certain time of the day. And also, we're going to collect that and we're going to visualize that data on Cisco DNA Center and FANA OpenStack uh, too. So Jeremy, tell us about how we can enable this entire power telemetry and how we can visualize this from the Catalyst switching or iOS XE. Yeah, absolutely, Vera. So you're asking about how we can leverage some of the features in iOS XE, specifically on our Catalyst switches, uh, to understand some of this data to consume it and visualize it. So really uh, on the right side of this, we're talking about the day one features, which is the Yang based API and some of the Yang data models that make this data available. Now in the bottom right side, we have the day two for device monitoring, specifically for this gRPC dial out telemetry feature um, that we've been supporting for quite some time. So when we talk about uh, the telemetry interfaces, uh, there's a couple that are available, uh, whether they're dial in or dial out. And as I mentioned, we're going to look specifically at the dial out, the gRPC dial out telemetry feature. And we'll have an example of how to enable this uh, telemetry feature coming up. So as we're talking about the telemetry interfaces, uh, as I mentioned, there's dial in and dial out. We'll look specifically at the dial out uh, telemetry feature. Now, all of these uh, telemetry interfaces can be collected uh, using this uh, collection stack here that we, uh, we call TIG, which is the Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. So Telegraph is the collector uh, or the receiver that uh, we're going to catch the telemetry at. Um, and we'll put some of that uh, configuration onto the, onto the device uh, to actually push that, uh, that data. And the data that we're going to push uh, is uh, from the Yang data models. Uh, we've called out some notable data models here. Uh, and the ones uh, that we're looking at specifically for this use case are the, which is the PoE Opper, right? So there's three specific data points that we want to collect here, the PoE port level details, the PoE switch level details, and the stack level detail. So we're collecting all of this from this one data model here that's linked and listed uh, on GitHub. And now we're using the uh, embedded event manager to turn on and off uh, some of these IoT endpoints uh, that Vera described in the beginning. All right, so at nine o'clock or at six o'clock, then we're gonna either power on or off uh, the PoE endpoints um, so that we can then actually understand uh, how much power is being drawn and how much power uh, is being reduced uh, when we're using uh, this type of power saving uh, mechanism with the embedded event manager. All right, so with that, let's actually go take a look at the, um, the data that comes a result, as a result of this telemetry data and this configuration that we put on. So here I'm gonna log in to the Grafana and we're gonna see the Smart Buildings dashboard where we're looking at about uh, seven or eight days worth of data. We can zoom in here and get a more detailed uh, uh, view where we can understand what, that the uh, total power allocated uh, for the PoE in the system is around uh, 750 watts uh, in the daytime. But then when we reduce it uh, in the off hours, it goes down all the way to 240 watts, right? This is at the uh, total power allocated, um, the system level. Uh, we can look at the individual PoE ports, as we can see here, where in the daytime, they're drawing about 50 or 10 or 20 watts. And then uh, in the nighttime, there's no power draw, right? There's no data coming in here because there's no draws. The ports are uh, disabled. So we can take a look at uh, one of the interfaces as well. We can get the, the raw data where we can see that this port 11 here 
uh, has a maximum power draw of 90, but it's actually uh, consuming about 81 uh, out of that 90. So with that, um, let me pass it over to you, Vera. Uh, can you like talk a little bit about the controller solutions here? Because right now we've been looking just at the device level. So can you talk a little bit about the controller level solutions that we have here? Sure, Jeremy. So what we have is a Cisco DNS Center-based uh, POH Trans dashboard where uh, we have built in these um, dashlets where we are consuming this POA telemetry data coming from the catalyst switches, uh, and we are using them here. Uh, they give uh, multi-contextual information, like the first one, if you see, it has this POA operational state distribution where that tells about how many POA endpoints do you have in your entire network or uh, based on the hierarchy that you're viewing here and how many days that we are viewing too. Uh, and uh, we can look at the trend as well to see like what are the device, how many devices that have been coming up and down or have they been consistently staying up or not for this entire time period. And we also have this POA power device distribution where it tells us about, you know, what kind of devices we have, uh, what are the power device types and classes based on IEEE and what is the allocated wattage for device time. <laughs> and then the the third one, the PO Insights, uh, tells us about what are the devices identified based on LLDP or CDP, and then the perpetual POE and the fast POE. These are the resilient POE features that have been enabled or can be enabled on the switch ports. Uh, we're able to look at these um, the switch count here, like what is the power load on each switch? So do we have any switches that are running to the closer to the peak load? So, but in this dashboard, we can see here, there are about five switches that are having up to 20% of power load on them. And the next one, the most important one here is the power usage, where this is the entire power available on all of your switches, where we can see what is the power allocation looks like here. So we're allocating about to all 2.98, that's about three kilowatt of power for the POE endpoints. And we have about five kilowatt of power allocated for the system power, that is the switch power. And there is about 34 watt kilowatts of power available for future or, uh, you know, for the POE allocations. So uh, if you click on this and go to the consumption as well, we can see further, like, what is the consumption? So besides allocation, how much is it is being consumed in real time, right? So we can drill down on the time, and then we can visualize what is the power consumption level is looking like. We can click on the trend here and see what is the power consumption um, uh, graph is over the time. And we have this, uh, in the next dashboard, we have this POE port availability where we have, uh, if you're planning to add on more ports, we can see what are the free ports are like for the 90 watt power or 60 watt power. Uh, with the 90 watt power, we have a lot of uh, uh, diverty endpoints uh, and outcomes coming in. And we also have this dashboard that tells us about what are the access points you have, what are the, how many of them are fully powered, are there any partially powered causing you any coverage gaps. This power telemetry is collected from the switches and the catalyst wireless controllers. So with that uh, wired automation use case that Jeremy showed us, we are noticing that we're able to bring down about 25% of energy usage on these IoT endpoints by turning them off at certain time of the day, which is about 9 p.m. in the evening and turning them back on automatically at 6 a.m. in the morning. Jeremy, what kind of automation can we do? How can we bring in these energy usage reduction to the wireless side of things as well? Yeah, that's a good question, Vera. It's about how we can have similar power savings on the wireless portfolio. Here we see the Calus 9800 wireless LAN controller, the calendar template scheduling feature. Right, this enables or this allows us to enable power save mode on the Cisco Catalyst uh, 9100 series of access points. And we have a config uh, example here uh, in the CLI, but we can also log into the controller and take a look at uh, this configuration in the GUI as well. So here I am logged into the controller. If I go to the configuration under the tags and profiles and the AP join option, we can see that I have the AP join profiles here. Now, when I select the default AP profile, I can select the AP tab and the power management tab, and then the calendar profile. This is where we have the power profile mapping. Here you can see that I have two power profiles defined. Right? They're essentially doing the same thing, that at 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. We're going to shut down the radios. 
right? So if we take a look uh, at this individual profile, we can see the parameters here are set to disable uh, these three specific radios, our six gig, our secondary five gig radio, and the legacy 2.4 gig, right? So this uh, happens at 7 a.m. Uh, and 7 p.m. every day. Now let's actually go and take a look at what that telemetry looks like uh, in the Grafana as well. So if I go over here to the PoE wireless example dashboard here, we can see that at the peak, we're drawing about 134 watts. And then uh, in the evenings when um, there's less users and we're in the power save mode, we're drawing much less, around 118 watts. All right, so we can see that the individual APs are consuming around 15, 16, 17 watts uh, when they're in use. And when they're in power save mode, they're consuming you know, 12, 13, 14. So they're saving um, you know, a couple percentage there, as we'll see coming up. But similar to what we saw for the IoT endpoints, we can also see individual details about the access points, which ports they're on, and then how much power they're actually drawing uh, individually. All right, so with that, let me pass it back to you, Vera. Can you talk a little bit about um, some of the monitoring and the automation impacts that we're seeing here? Yeah, so on the wired side, we have already talked about the 25% energy reduction on the daily usage of power, right, for the IoT endpoints. But with this uh, wired wireless controller-based uh, uh, automation, we're seeing about 12% of energy usage reduction on this end on on each access point. Uh, we're also getting 100% of visibility on the PoE power consumption because of this telemetry. So this entire data is based on the use case uh, that we showcased and setup that we showed in the demo. So Jeremy, tell us about this uh, publicly available data for, for the users to take advantage of. Yeah, for sure, of course, Vera. So as a customer, you can very easily replicate uh, the examples and the demos that we've showcased here. There's two resources. Primarily, it's the GitHub repository here, and that has the prescription, all the details, about the data model and the configuration um, that you can use to enable this. And then of course we have the Grafana dashboard uh, that you can easily import into Grafana to see the similar view uh, that we're showcasing uh, in the Grafana demo. Uh, so with that, back to you, Vera. Thank you, Jeremy. So yeah, uh, we're at the end of the video. So, so far we uh, talked about how the power telemetry, the iOS XE based, uh, PoE or power telemetry can be used. Um, and also we showcased about this uh, Grafana dashboard first that we built for smart buildings, which is uh, publicly available as Jeremy said on the GitHub page. Uh, we also have the DNS center. Once you onboard the switch onto the DNS center, the PoE telemetry is automatically enabled and made it readily consumable. And also you can take advantage of the 9800 uh, controller based uh, AP power saving uh, configuration or profiling that we see. Uh, and uh, yeah, we all, all, we're also sharing these uh, resources on the GitHub pages, as we already mentioned. So yeah, um, well, we wish that you will be able to take advantage of this power telemetry and take advantage of the DNS and POA assurance as well. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you.